This is Jason Dacey on the road in my hometown of Sydney, Australia, a long way from uh, Southeast Asia. And I've tracked down a man I've been chasing for a while. He's a Singapore music legend, Rex Go, formerly, of course, with Air Supply and many other big acts uh, in music. It's great to see you, Rex. I finally got you. Really nice to meet you, Jason. (laughs) Yeah, here you are, and you've been in Australia since 1972. You've been in Sydney since 1976. Yeah. You've actually spent more time in Sydney than I have in the last uh, 30 years or so. So before we talk about your musical career, do you feel more Aussie or do you feel more Singaporean or an Asian? Well, you can always take the Singapore you know, guy out of Singapore, <laughs> but you can never get the Singapore out of you know, a Singaporean. Yeah, doesn't you, matter where, where I, know, I live. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And you're 68 years old now. I can't believe it because you look good. You're, you're trim and, and you're healthy. You're still performing. What do you say when you look back on your career? And, you know, now it's time to reflect. We're sitting here on a, on a cool and rainy day in your house in, in, in the Sydney suburb of Glebe. Um, I think I'm, I'm blessed. I'm really blessed. You know, to come from Singapore to Australia doesn't know, didn't know any, anyone. And then uh, making a career out of music and still doing it after all these years. I think I'm pretty blessed. Do you still have the same passion for it, the same hunger, the same enjoyment? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. You know, I still practice um, learning songs almost every day, learning new repertoires all the time. Do you feel that your skills are still as good as they were in your late 60s, say, compared to your 20s and 30s when you're at the height of rock and roll? (laughs) Uh, Probably, you know, my finger will be a little bit slower, (laughs) not as nimble, but uh, I'm still working on it. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going to talk about air supply shortly, but let's start at the beginning. 1972, you grew up um, in Singapore, was a McPherson Mm -hmm. area, right? Yeah, that's right. And in 1972, you were 21 years of age, but you were already well known within the Singapore music scene. Tell us about those, those early days. And you actually started playing the ukulele, didn't you? I started when I was, I think, about nine years old on the ukulele. My mom bought me a ukulele. And, you know, when I started playing, uh, I just couldn't put it down. And luckily, two doors down from where I was living, um, a, a young boy called Benny Chan, um, he's actually in a, in a band called the Checkmates. And he taught me how to play the ukulele. And that's how I sort of, you know, started from there. And what do you think of it? The, it's, a, it's a cute instrument, isn't it? I love it. I still play it. <laughs> in fact, you know, I, I do, um, now and again, I do shows and they require a ukulele, like um, I'm doing a Beatles show, right? And especially when I do the White Album, when I do the White Album mm-hmm. tour, and there's a song called Honey Pie. I know it, yeah, of course. Who, who doesn't know Honey Pie? <laughs> and uh, I play ukulele on that. Wow. And of course, we see Paul McCartney, don't we, uh, get, get out the ukulele sometimes oh, yeah. when he does uh, George Harrison songs, I think well, something, right? Yeah, yes. And, you know, ukulele is a beautiful instrument. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll talk more about, um, you know, those early days in Singapore, because you were a big name already, even though you were in your teens and your early 20s. Um, you know, what was the music scene like? Because I, I didn't know Singapore then. Um, it was fantastic. Um, I did a lot of um, woodshedding, a lot of learning um, from records um, in Singapore. I joined a lot of bands. I started off um, with a band called, in high school, with a band called The Convoys. And then Tani's Titan, where I played bass. And then I uh, joined a band called Group 123, and I was the bass player. Until about six months ago, uh, six months later, um, the lead guitar player, Dave Tam, decided to leave. And the manager, Jimmy Lowe, decided to uh, ask me and say, Rex, I know you can play the guitar. Why don't you take over guitar? I'll get a bass player. And that's how I started on the guitar again. And what about that decision to go to Australia in 1972? You know, you'd already had a good, pretty good track record uh, in, in Singapore. What was the, what was the, the motivation for you? Uh, it was... Um, um, I think I can, you know, I like to expand my music um, in Australia. Um, also, I, I met a girl, which I, I married uh, later and had two kids. Um, but, uh, yeah, my primary thing was, you know, come over here, see whether I can um, improve on my uh, musicianship. 
Well, first of all, you went to Adelaide. That was in 1972. Then you ended up um, in Melbourne, I believe, and, and Ad- Adelaide, Melbourne, and then Sydney in 1976, right? And, I, and that, yeah, was, I, that was when I was in high school. And I can remember yeah. seeing you, you know, playing um, when, you, when you joined Air Supply. So tell me about joining Air Supply, you know, one of the biggest bands in the world. Yeah, I, when I come to Sydney, when I came over to Sydney uh, from Melbourne, the band broke up in Sydney and I decided to stay. Then I heard that Air Supply needed a guitar player, so I just went for an audition. This was like 76, right? They had a hit called uh, Love and Other Bruises then. I remember it, yeah, great song. And they weren't big in uh, in the States at all, you know, just local, just in Australia. Um, I went for the audition and I got it. And so I joined the band and then um, a few months later, you know, I heard that Rod Stewart wanted the band to go over to the States to, to support, to open uh, for them all over the States and Canada. And so, yeah, I went uh, with Hair Supply over to the States. This is the first time, this is the first time. Um, toured all around the States and uh, played at the Madison Square Gardens. Wow, that's a, that's the pinnacle for any musician. And here you are, some guy from Singapore, uh, you know, and just really a, a few years after you've left, you're playing at Madison yeah, Square Garden. Madison, and that was an eye-opener. I mean, you know, it's like, what, 80,000 people maybe in the closed arena. Um, yeah, I, was the, I remember the first night when I, when I stand on stage, my legs were shivering. I was virtually shivering, you know, like, wow, this is it, you know, mm. can't go sort of higher than this. Yeah, and we're with, um, where's Rex Go? He's a, a musical legend here in Australia, originally born in Singapore, played with many big bands around the world, and we're in, sitting, drinking tea and, and talking about his music <laughs> career. But you actually left Air Supply, and you and went to study uh, jazz, didn't you, at the Sydney Conservatorium? Yeah, and, well, this was the first time when I left Air Supply, um, then I, I went to study at the conservatorium, um, you know, for two years. And in the meanwhile, I joined a band called uh, the Leon Berger Band, which I played at the Musos Club in Sydney, you know, two or three nights a week for quite a few years. And uh, in 1980, Graham Russell called me up again and said, Rex, we'd like you to come back to the band. And uh, it seems like uh, we might be... Uh, um, doing business in the States. So I joined them back, and that was when they released Lost in Love. Oh, that's probably their most iconic hit. Um, Gary Russell and Russell Hitchcock still going strong, yeah, aren't Graham they? Graham Russell. Graham Russell, yeah, yeah and, Russell and Russell Hitchcock, Hitchcock yes. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, this is the, the second time when I joined, um, you know, we started off, like, you know, easing into um, uh, the American scene, um, yeah, and then we we made two albums, and those two albums were like the biggest sellers for them. Still is. Why do you think Air Supply was so popular? Because uh, I know that I think they were both in um, Jesus Christ Superstar, weren't they? In the yeah, musical, and that's they, right. They, they, were, had... they were actually in the chorus. They weren't actually the main actors. Oh, is that right? Because yeah. that was a big thing in the early seventies here in Australia, where Jesus Christ Superstar, the, the, the musical, w- was uh, a lot of names and were launched. And but they were in the chorus, mm-hmm. but obviously they wanted to be bigger stars. And this is in the seventies, and so many hits later. Why are they so enduring? Why were they so good? I think this song touched a lot of people's hearts, you know, I mean, um, and it's also like the start of the big ballads. Uh, the they power ballads, one, right? Yeah, the power ballads. They're one of the innovators in power ballads. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, um, it's, yeah, it's um, obviously a, a lot of people like that sort of music in those days, and uh, we became uh, huge in, in America and all over the world. I think we had seven consecutive top ten hits. It's incredible, and of course, you co-wrote some uh, songs with yes, them as well. A I lot of people don't don't know that. Yeah, I co-wrote about four songs with them. Mm, that's an incredible uh, achievement. But their vocals. I mean, we look at um, you know Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock. They are now, I think, your age or not, if not older, yet the vocals are so strong. Are they? Yes. Is that what really separated them? I think so. You know, good strong harmonies, and Russell has got such a powerful voice, high, and really powerful. Mm. You know, and he he once told me that he's never had any training at all. He knew that he has he had a gift, 
and uh, and that's his voice, you know. Uh, yes, whenever he sings, you know, like still sends shivers up my spine. So recording with them and touring with them and, you know, playing in big arenas, uh, you were pinching yourself, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. Like, <laughs> is this true? <laughs> And uh, after that, uh, I, I remember when I was living here in Australia, I, I would see you in, in a band called QED, QED, QED with Jenny, yeah, Morris. With Jenny uh, Morris. Yeah, Jenny yeah. Morris uh, is a iconic, again, I'm using that word a lot, iconic, but <laughs> she's a really great singer from New Zealand. Um, and we saw a lot of New Zealanders coming to oh, yes. Australia, didn't we? Yeah. Like Dragon and, and Split Ends and, That's and right. many yeah. others, right? Dave Dobbin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, in those days, um, I became actually, you know, a session player, a, a s- session musician in studios. And one day I had a call from Charlie Fisher, big producer that produced Savage Garden. He says, Ray, come and, come and play, you know, on this record. You know, I had this girl called Jenny Morris, and that's how I met Jenny Morris. And we did, uh, we did a song called Everywhere I Go. And from that song, we formed a band called QED. And this was now you're a front guy. I mean, I know in, in Air Supply you were in, in, in the photos with the band, but this time it's a bit different, isn't it? Because in Air Supply it's the main two guys, you know, um, Graham and Russell mm-hmm. at the front and everyone else behind. But this is where you were actually, a, a, yeah. a, a, you know, an equal. Part of, yeah, an equal part of the band. And uh, yeah, that, that was great. That was, that was fantastic. You know, we, uh, we, we made an album. Uh, and we lasted, um, I think, two years, two or three years. Um, I had a great time and then uh, you know it's time to move on so and then I got uh, more involved in studio work there was studio work everywhere I mean I was doing um, sessions six or seven sessions a week plus playing at night so I was flat out with Rex Go, who's uh, made a career out of being a guitarist in famous bands here in Australia for something like 40 years, and he's still going strong at the age of 68. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rex, what, what about uh, other artists that you played with that really made a, a mark on you? I know Daryl Braithwaite, uh, Glenn Shorrock, who I've interviewed yeah. before. Who, who made with, a mark? I toured with Daryl for, you know, when he did the Horses Tour, and there was, like, playing big arenas all over Australia. And now I'm working with Glenn Shorrock. Um, and he's the and original uh, singer, I should say, if people don't know, of the Little River Band who had those uh, top ten hits uh, in the US. Yes, yes. And I re- I'm still I- enjoying playing, you know, with him. Uh, he's such an iconic person too, you know. Um, whenever he sings, right, that, that's it. You hear Little River Band all over again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they're one of my favourites. Uh, you know, when, when you look at the way that uh, it, it's evolved, do you think it was word of mouth? Did people just, did you get a reputation that, that brought you other work? How did it um, work? Yeah, um, in, in the music industry, it's mainly by word of mouth. You know, your resume not, doesn't really count, really, you know. You've got to sort of, you're only as good as your last um, thing that you did. So, um it's I so I have to really sort of you know keep um, what do you call fit in the in the music industry like practice all the time um, make sure that you know I'm really prepared for every gig I play. And what about your ear? Is it as good as uh, you know it, it was? So you have to have a good <laughs> ear, don't you, to make sure you get everything right. Yeah, true, although you know I, I know that I'm losing a bit of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, playing loud music for so long. Uh, but yeah, I you, you got to have a good ear. Mm. to be able to, to pick things up really quickly, you know. That's how I got in the air supply because they asked me to play, can you play this, can you play that, you know, when I was at the audition. I said, yeah, not a problem. So I played it and they said, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you play lead guitar, but you can play rhythm guitar, you can play bass guitar, ukulele. Um, tell me, you know, a favourite a favorite memory that you have from, from maybe playing with Air Supply or with another band like well, Daryl Braithwaite, who was a very popular member of uh, Sherbet, and then he had launched his um, solo yeah. career. Anything that you really, you know, really say, hey, I've really made it now? Well, I mean, standing in front of a large crowd, I suppose, you know, uh, when you're standing in front of 80,000 people, 100,000 people, um, you know that, you know, you're doing something good. You're, you're doing something right. 
Do you feel proud that you're a, a Singaporean, you're an Asian? Because I remember when I was in, in high school in, in the 70s here in Sydney, there weren't many, you know, um, Malaysians or Singaporeans. We had a couple, but, um, you know, but you were a bit of a trailblazer. No, um, well, yeah, you got to, you know, I suppose you got to prove yourself a little bit harder, right? People are sceptical. Yeah, we, people are sceptical. But once, you know, you win their hearts... Um, I find that I'm treated equal, just like any other musician. And I'm really grateful for that. Mm. Because it wants your past that, can he actually play? <laughs> Once you get past that, you know, you're, you're part of the, uh, the music family. Because there's a lot of image, isn't there, in, in rock and roll? You know, we see you know, Mick Jagger strutting around the stage. He's got the fat oh, lips. Yeah. And, you know, you're seeing bulky and, and muscular, you know, you're, you're, you're muscular guys. You're, you know, you're a small Chinese guy, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I think I let my music speak for, my, you know, for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about now? What's keeping you busy at the moment? Um, I'm still playing a lot. Recently, I just did uh, the score to Twilight. It means that people watch the movie Twilight on a big screen at the opera house, right? And I play with the orchestra. I think it's like a 50-piece orchestra. And we play the whole score. So you, you watch the movie live, and, but you hear the music. You know, you, you know, people watch the movie, but you hear the music live. So you're at the iconic Sydney Opera House? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That must feel good. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing playing there, you know. And so you're doing that kind of thing. I know you mentioned you were doing a tribute show for Fleetwood Mac. You were helping out on that? Yeah, I was helping our guy. And uh, we went to Cairns for two, two or three days. Mm. That was good. Mm. What about um, you know, remaining ambitions? You know, do you have anything that you, that you haven't done that you'd like to do? Um, well, I've started you know, producing um, a bit lately. So you know, that's another sort of thing that I really want to do. In, in go into production and what about spending time more time in singapore is that on your mind so you know catching up i know you you initially you didn't go back much did you but then in yeah. recent years you've gone yeah. back more yeah i like to i like to go back you know maybe for you know f- maybe spend about a month there and really get to meet all my all my old friends again i think that would be good but normally it's just a few days here is it yeah and usually i go back it's for business it's for you know playing concerts yeah. Uh, yeah, and you went there with Air Supply, didn't you? Uh, yeah, a couple of times with Air Supply. What was that like? Oh, that was amazing. You know, um, seeing, you know, playing in my home, my my old hometown, and that was about that was really good. Yeah, did you show the guys around a bit and say, hey, you got to try this local food? <laughs> yeah, yeah, brought some of the guys, you know, to a few restaurants, the local, you know, eats like Newton Circus and things like that, and that was good. <laughs> you, you really miss the food, uh, and that's one thing I've noticed. You know, being away from Asia. Do you find you can get the food you want here? Slowly now, but not, uh, not in the 70s and 80s. It's really hard to get good Singapore-type food here. But now, yes, yes, you, you, I can now. But you have to pay for it, right? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's getting better, much better. Now, Rex, would you have imagined in 1972 when you left um, Singapore that you would have had, had the career that you did? And, you know, here we are in 2019, almost 2020, and you're still going strong. Uh, no, actually, I, I follow my heart and see what turns up. I didn't, you know, I mean, come from a, a Chinese family. You know, my parents always say, you know, get a good job. <laughs> that was it. You know, like that's their main goal for me is to get a good job. But, you know, from the very start, I told my dad, I said, no, I want to play music. But thankfully, you know, he says, well, if you want to do that, you know, I've, had, I've got his blessing. Oh, I'm sure your dad would be proud now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, just, I just follow my heart a lot of the time. Well, Rex Go, what a pleasure it is to finally meet you, sit down, have a cup of tea with you in my hometown of Sydney and hear about your career. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank you, Jason. Thank you very much.